The New Yorker's Adam Gopnik mulls over House Democrats' choice of holding on to prudence or upholding principles in the manifest case against Donald Trump. I have condensed his evolving argument as economically as I could. The prudential argument against impeachment, which House Speaker Nancy Pelosi advocates, is that the crucial thing for those who resist Donald Trump is to win elections in 2020. A victory in the presidential election is paramount but almost as important are victories in the congressional elections which would, in the event of a President Warren or Harris, or whomever, make her policies possible, and, in the dire event of Trump's re-election, would sustain a power center able, at least in theory, to resist him. The principled case, now and then, is summed up in three words, Trump's a crook. Any one of half a dozen scandals, would have been the immediate cause of an impeachment inquiry into, any previous president. Trump himself continues to profit while and through holding public office. Above all stands his record of open engagement with foreign autocrats against American interests and against democracy itself, and, with it, a record of attempting to obstruct justice, to obscure inquiry and a any such engagement. The task of holding Trump accountable becomes more urgent, for a simple reason, he's getting worse. Apparently emboldened by what he sees as his acquittal in the Mueller report, he feels free to execute his own, corrupt, vision of the presidency. There is another, pragmatic reason to pursue impeachment. Nixon may have been a bad man, but he was not an incompetent president. Pretty much every Republican in Congress knows that Trump is a dangerous or unfit president, and clings to him only out of partisan loyalty and fear of his or her own bass. Let them own their own bad consciences, and, making Trump's Republican defenders own the truth does not sound like bad politics. The normalization of Trump and Trumpism, allowing those things to be defined merely as a political problem needing a political cure, degrades democracy. Calculating political advantage, too, narrowly misses the point of taking part in politics, which is to defend values. I would so much like to agree with Gopnik, a distinguished commentator and New Yorker writer since the mid-1980s, since Trump is a crook, among many other unpleasant attributes. But I can't quite bring myself to any sort of pragmatic or flawlessly principled reason to pursue impeachment, I question that Republican lawmakers are burdened by bad consciences, and, in this one narrowly defined instance, making them own the truth does sound like bad politics. Democrats from purple or red districts, which gave them the majority, would be at tremendous risk in doing so, especially since most or all of them promised their future constituents they'd reject devout partisanship. They would be contested on that by duplicitous Republican rivals, whether they supported Trump's ultimate removal or not. Impeachment proceedings would have GOP challengers dancing on incumbent, moderate Democrats' political graves months before Election Day. Thus I can picture a house cleaning from hell. It is no light matter to shove so many temperate Democrats into harm's way. And the more authentic degradation of democracy would embody itself in a Republican House. The crucial thing for those who resist Donald Trump is indeed to win elections in 2020. I'm unaware of any other foremost objective in politics, and should impeachment emerge as a dominant aim, the pragmatism of principles might well become a principled abyss. I'd prefer a censure of Trump, the harshest of censures that details his numerous crimes and assures conscientious voters, a bit of pragmatic fibbing here, that the House would have impeached him, if not for Mitch McConnell's probable, in fact almost certain refusal to even hear the case in his dissolute Trump Republican Senate. Just as he violated the Constitution in refusing to hear the case for Merrick Garland, McConnell's nickname of Moscow Mitch is fiendishly apt, for he has the political ethics of a vodka slashing Putin. A censure would counteract the normalization of Trump and Trumpism, the Democratic presidential nominee would also protest any such normalization by encouraging voters to interpret the race, in part, as a referendum on Trump, his crimes, his unfitness, his friendships with autocrats and enmity toward allies. 
It should go without saying that the nominee must also lay out policy plans for real progress on health care, a public option, Trump's astronomical deficits, gun reform, repairing or rebuilding America's infrastructure, and a host of other worthies with a Democratic House, Senate, and White House. Yet the ideal way to unnormalize Trump and Trumpism, not allowing gangsterism to be defined merely as a political problem needing a political cure, would be eight years of a Democratic president demonstrating that incessant and abusive tweeting, disagreeable behavior at international forums, law-breaking and lying and the like do not necessarily come with the territory. Normality would be renormalized. After two terms of presidential decency Trump and Trumpism would transmute into little but a vague memory, although voters should exercise prudence in not forgetting too much. This president has been an aggressive driver on our road to serfdom, and lest we completely forget, an avowed representative democracy will flourish only through a wary of demagogues electorate. Let's block ads. Why? 